In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. To our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. They went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then he laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Cry out with joy to God all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God how tremendous your deeds. 
before you, O the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to you near. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. He turned the sea into dry land, they passed through the river dry shod. Let our joy then be in him, he rules forever by his might. Come and hear all who fear God, I will tell what he did for my soul. Bless me, God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect, with a clear conscience, so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why? Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins. Died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to a life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you who love me will keep my words, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. That spirit of truth, whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he is with you, he is in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. In a short time, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day, you will understand that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me. And anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. The Lord is good. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now in the sixth Sunday of Easter, on which we are coming closer to Ascension and the Pentecost Sunday. 
that from Pentecost, from Easter to Pentecost, our readings focus on the early apostolic preaching of the good news of salvation and on the promises of Jesus to his fearful disciples, especially his promise of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the companion, the encourager, the counselor, the advocate, the witness, the helper, and the judge. They are all names of the Holy Spirit. Today's readings explain who the Holy Spirit is and what his roles are and how we can experience him in our daily lives. As we approach the Feast of Pentecost, the Church invites us to celebrate the coming of the Advocate. She calls us to celebrate the Spirit of Truth who strengthens us in the proclamation of the good news. The message we bear is not false. Rather, it comes from the Advocate. Our first reading is a continuation of the frantic efforts the disciples of Christ are making in order to bear testimony to the risen Lord. Through their efforts, the Samaritans received their sacraments of baptism and confirmation. On this day, Peter performed his episcopal function by laying hands on the newly converts. Since Philip baptized these new converts, why didn't he not confirm them? Why was it necessary for Peter and John to travel that long distance in order to lay hands on them or to confirm the new converts already baptized by Philip? An understanding of our Catholic Catechism is very important here. What Philip did by inviting Peter, the chief shepherd of the apostles, was absolutely in line with the church's teaching on confirmation. The church says, the ordinary minister of the sacrament of confirmation is the bishop. If the need arises, he may grant a fa the faculty to priests, although it is fitting that he confess it himself mindful that the celebration of confirmation has been temporarily separated from baptism for this reason. Bishops are the successors of the apostles. The Catholic Catechism 1313 The Samaritans needed the Holy Spirit as much as we do today because it is the Holy Spirit that strengthens and makes one a true soldier of Christ. He helps us to bear witness to the truth without fear. You have not received the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of sonship. The spirit bears witness that we are God's children. It is this same spirit that resurrected Christ that gives life to our mortal bodies. As the principal agent of evangelization, the Holy Spirit confirms the truth we preach. In the second reading of today, Peter encouraged us to have reverence for Christ. Also, he advises us to treat with respect even those who despise the gospel we preach, those who look down on us, and those even who mock us. He reminds us of the animating power of the Holy Spirit, even in the life of Christ, that in the body 
he was put to death. In the spirit, he was raised to life. It is the same spirit that raised Jesus that sustains us in the truth. This means that once the spirit of God comes upon us, we become active for Christ. Because what gives life is the spirit of God. As we are a couple of weeks away from Pentecost, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. In today's Gospel, taken from the Last Supper discuss, describes the gift Jesus will ask the Father to send, the Holy Spirit, who will live as the Paraclete, the Divine Advocate, in those who obey Jesus' commandments, especially the commandments to love. Jesus will continue to live in his believers with the indwelling Father and the Holy Spirit so that we will not be left as orphans. The reason Jesus' the reason Jesus's continued presence in us and in the church through the Holy Spirit gives meaning and purpose to all we are and all we do in his name. As the divine advocate, the Holy Spirit will instruct us in Jesus' doctrines and illumine our minds to receive deeper knowledge of our faith. In addition, the divine advocate will enable us to defend our faith powerfully and will guide us properly in our practice of our true Christian love. We will be able to recognize Jesus in the poor, in the sick, in the homeless, in the marginalized, in the outcast, and in the drug addicts, and even in the criminals. I was in a prison and also to become agents of healing and reconciliation in a broken and divided world. What is this commandment that we must keep in order to receive the spirit of truth? It is, go into the whole world and preach the good news of, to all creation. It is also a command to love both God and our neighbor. When we do this, we are certainly preaching the good news of truth. When we love our neighbors, our own lives, our own ways of dealing with them, our own personal relationships with them, we show the truth of God through us. The advocate will come to strengthen us in the way of truth. He will also come to confirm that indeed we are sons and daughters of God through what we do, how we live, how we radiate the presence of Christ to people around us, and how the light of the truth of Christ, faith, shows forth to others. And people will see Christ, see God, experience Christ through us. Let us then pray. Oh, come Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. God is going to renew the face of the earth through us and through our prayers and trust in the living and risen Christ. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. Let us stand to proclaim our faith. We use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of intercession. We live in the cities of this earth, bearing the burdens of our confusion and our woes. From every side, prophets arise to tell us the meaning of our lives. We pray that we do not lose our vision of the new Jerusalem and become deaf to the whispers of the Spirit who speaks to us in the sufferings of people. That empty stove fronts, holes in the alphards, vandalized ears will tell us of our failures in the cities of this world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord graciously hear yes. us. That we will seek peace by reading the facts and searching out the issues rather than by avoiding them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us, that by not being afraid to listen to angry voices, we will begin to hear the sorrow of human heart. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord graciously hear us, that we will not see the solutions we devise for the problems of our cities or country as monuments of our immortality, but only as a step towards better answers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the power of God's love to consume us, that we may exercise our ministry of reconciliation with courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Lord will inspire the doctors, the scientists, and the pharmacists to be able to find the cure to coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us add up with our own personal prayers and prayers and petitions to our loving God who knows all our needs. We we'll surrender all unto God through our blessed Mother Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for all sinners, now to the hour of our death. Amen. We stand firm in the life of Christ, who tells us again and again, do not be afraid. As he was afraid when he was killed in the name of the common good. The Spirit imposes no burdens. The Spirit wastes no words. Ask the good Lord to grant us whatever we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands. For your praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exhaust in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he too prayed, giving you thanks. Broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to the disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. with the third acclamation, the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give him thanks that he held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, you are church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her mother, spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
We may marry to be called to eternal life, and we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us bow to each other to show the sign of peace. Lamb of God, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you for joining this Holy Eucharist. That some of us who, have no, who don't have the opportunity to receive Christ physically, body and blood and body of Christ, but we can call Jesus to come into our lives through the acts of spiritual communion. That God will come into our lives and then come into the lives of our families. Let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And here we are, lifting our hands to you.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Father the Son, and Holy. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Thank you for joining this Holy Eucharist. May God continue to keep us safe and to bless us all. Thank God bless you. Later, we will look into the website by weekend and know the program for next week. And all the pastoral letters and all the things from the bishop and from the, for the parish priest. All will be there. Thank you. Hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is alive. Hallelujah, sing for joy, now Jesus is alive. Open up your hearts, listen to God's word. Let God's spirit hear today, burn within your heart. Hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he is alive. Hallelujah, sing for joy, now Jesus is alive. Sing your songs of Lift your voices high God's glory fills the earth Jesus is alive Hallelujah, he is risen Hallelujah, he is alive Hallelujah, sing for joy Now Jesus is alive Go and tell the world Go and sing good news Spread this message